Hi, everybody. This is Adam Ellenboss from Nightlight Astrology. It's Saturday, June 8th, and I'm sitting down to talk about horary astrology. Now, when most people hear that word, they're like, what? <laughs> what, what did you just say? So the word horary, horary astrology, um, it's the youngest branch of astrology, supposedly the youngest branch of astrology comes about during the medieval period of astrology. And the word horary means, you know, um, basically of the hour kind of has the meaning of being of the moment. And uh, the, basic, um, uh, the basic reason that you would do a horary would be a horary chart would be because you have a very specific outcome oriented um, predictive question. Um, so for example, um, I'm going to show you a chart today that asks the question, will I get the job? Now, um, a horary question uh, could be asked for a lot of different reasons. Um, I have been doing horary astrology since 2012, and it is easily my favorite form of astrology, and yet I would say in some ways it is the most difficult because every horary chart is like a puzzle, and there are a series of methods and sort of like interpretive rules and procedures that you follow uh, that... Um, are different in every chart that you look at. Same rules, but slightly different application. So in some ways, a horary chart will present uh, the situation that a person is asking about within the context of the planetary positions at the time that you cast a chart. You cast a horary chart at the moment that somebody's asking a question. So at the moment that I receive the question in my inbox, will I get the job, I mark the time and then I cast the chart for the time that the question was received. And that chart becomes the chart of the question. So the chart of the hour, the chart of the moment that this question was put to the, to the oracle of the heavens. Uh, and then again, you follow this kind of elaborate um, set of procedures to determine the answer. So it's a predictive method. And again, uh, I won't go too much into the history, but it comes about during the medieval period, though arguably it goes all the way back probably to the Hellenistic period of astrology and uh, is used by um, uh, Arabian and Indian astrologers and also um, may have, again, its roots even all, all the way back to Greek astrology. So um, it became revived. The use of horary astrology was revived during the 19. 80s, um, thanks to um, a woman named um, Olivia Barclay. Now, um, I'm trying to think if I have her book somewhere on my shelf. I think I do somewhere. But anyway, um, at any rate, she was responsible for the sort of rebirth of the an interest in horary astrology in um, the UK. And this kind of spread and became a part of a general renaissance and in, renaissance or rebirth of the interest in ancient forms of astrology that spread throughout the uh, West, especially in through things like Project Hindsight, which is why we now have um, Hellenistic astrology has so uh, prolifer is so um, prolific and sort of a lot of people are interested in it. So horary has this really important role to play in terms of um, facilitating the awakening of ancient forms of astrology. It's a very special branch of astrology. You can do very specific things with it, um, like locate missing objects. You could say, you know, where is my uh, missing dog or where is my um, missing wallet? Um, I have, uh, they're more challenging missing object horaries, but I've done quite a few of them in my day and located a lot of missing objects for people, including I helped a farmer locate a missing bull that had wandered out of their field. Um, so there's all sorts of really amazing, uh, horary is very magical. That's why I like it so much. It's a, it's a very interesting form of astrology, but it's highly predictive. So people will ask something like, I mean, I've had questions such as um, my, my mother is not doing very well. She's in her 90s. Um, will she pass before the end of the year? <clears throat> or questions regarding, you know, maybe the exact moment of death while someone is in hospice or something like that. I've answered questions like, am I pregnant right now? Or am I about to get pregnant? Um, and also, um, I mean, I've helped locate, I've helped locate a missing person before. Um, so, um, there's a, it's just truly a remarkable form of astrology. So why am I telling you about this? I'm telling you about it just because it's interesting and you might find it interesting if you've never heard about it. I'm going to show you a horary just for fun today and give you just a, a few little insights as to how it works. 
but also because uh, once every other year I offer a horary astrology course. Uh, that course is coming up in July. It starts on July 10th. I apologize in advance for bombarding my viewers uh, recently with my, <laughs> I have two courses in a row. It's not, um, I usually offer two course periods a year, every six months I have courses, but this is kind of an exception because um, the horary course, I delayed releasing it because I was getting so overwhelmed with registrations for my natal course, which starts tomorrow. So at any rate, uh, July 10th on Wednesday evenings, uh, my horary course will be starting. The horary course is really simple. It's 24 meetings in a year. Um, plus you get access to my seasonal speaker series. So that's 12 extra guest lectures. Um, and in this uh, program, you go through some of the basics of horary theory. And then mostly in class, what we're doing is we're working on horary charts together because they're kind of, they're, each chart is like a mystery. And so I call in live readings from my Facebook feed and we get live questions in class that we work on together as a class. So it's very hands-on, it's very participatory, it's really fun. Um, and uh, the methods that I work with come from two major textbooks that I use in the course. One is John Frawley's uh, Horary Textbook, Revised Edition, and the other is William Lilly's Christian Astrology. William Lilly was a great uh, sort of master of Horary, um, who lived during basically the um, uh, sort of uh, Renaissance period, and he is uh, his textbook is maybe one of the one of the most, if not the most, world renowned textbook on horary astrology. Um, it's called Christian Astrology. It's not a Christian text, but it's called that um, because of some of the political and spiritual climate of his times, which is an interesting conversation in and of itself. But so we look at these two theoretical books, we learn a lot of theory in the first five or six lectures, and then we have, you know, the rest of the course where we're basically taking live clients. Uh, there's no better way to learn horary than to be hands-on. For example, I just finished a two-year, or a, it's a one-year apprenticeship that I took two years with because I was really taking my time with John Frawley, whose textbook we use. So, um, we use a lot of his methods found in his textbook because he's been my teacher. And um, so that just for people who are interested and also for people who are wondering if you might be qualified to take the horary class or not. Um, the main thing that you need to know prior to studying horary, you do have to have a little prior knowledge because it's a more advanced um, form of astrology. You need to know your dignities. You need to know which planets rule which signs, where they are in their detriments, where they're in their exaltations, where they're in their falls. You need to know about things like, you know, the, the dignity language in general. You need to know the meanings of the houses, and you need to know basically the meanings of the signs. And um, you also need to have an understanding of how aspects work, trines, sextiles, squares, oppositions, and how to read them in charts. So if you've got all of that under your belt, even, you know, moderately under your belt, horary will work for you. Um, if not, I typically recommend that students go through my first year natal program because I, I, uh, I basically advertise this program as a more intermediate or advanced class for students who have already had my year one class. But some people have had more exposure to um, astrology than others and may be totally ready to take this class. So that might mean you. There is an early bird rate for this class as well. Uh, it's $1,200 if you pay in full prior to July 1st. It is $1,600 with a 12-month payment plan otherwise, and I also offer need-based tuition as always if you're experiencing financial hardship. You can check all of that out on my website and the certification course page. Everything's explained there. The forms you need are there to fill out and send to me or the donate button if you want to make the full payment. It's all there. So I'll put the link in this YouTube uh, chat box. Um, <clears throat> so that's what you need to know. So I'm going to show you a horary now. This is a very, very basic horary. In the days to come, I'm going to demonstrate a bunch more horaries just for fun um, because they are really delightful. And you should also know that as I'm, I'm very still, consider myself still in the mode of learning with horary. Now, I, I, that is really true for all of astrology. I'll be a student of astrology the rest of my life. It, you can't ever master it. But um, horary is more challenging. So I don't, like right now, I don't even offer a full priced horary reading. All of my horary readings that I do on my website are by donation. And the main reason that I do them by donation is because I'm just gaining experience. So my goal for myself was to gain 588 
uh, chart readings, which is a sort of sacred planetary number, um, and get those readings under my belt before standardizing a price um, for horary readings. So I'm about 300 plus readings into that process, which I've been doing over the past two years. As I also finished another horary apprenticeship, I've taken another one previously as well. So actually three now. So um, at any rate, that being said, I, I tell that to people just because when you come into my class and you should know that I do not consider myself some great horary master. This class is meant for people who have never really taken horary before who are interested in having a good, fun, group-based, participatory introduction to the topic. Um, and then, you know, it'll give you the platform or the foundation to take off and study it on your own for many years to come. So, okay, let's take a look at a horary today. This, I'm going to walk you through a horary chart. This is a chart that I received a while ago, and I've made it anonymous. And the question is just, will I get the job? So this is someone who uh, has applied for a job and is wondering if they'll get it. Now in Horary, there's a few basic things that we do. I'm just gonna, again, I'm keeping this very simple today. We look at the ascendant, in this case, the ascendant is Scorpio, and the ruler of that ascendant, which would be Mars in this case, becomes the ruler uh, becomes the individual who's asking the question. So Mars represents our querent or our client, the person asking the question. They also will get as a co-signifier of them, the moon. So this client gets the moon in Mars. Now the job is a 10th house matter. So the job becomes the planetary ruler of the 10th place, which is Mercury. So the question now becomes, will uh, this individual who is Mars have contact with Mercury. Now you can see that Mercury is in Mars's sign in Aries and Mars is in Mercury's sign in Gemini. They have mutual reception. What does that tell us? Sort of tells us the job likes this person and this person likes the job. There's mutual interest. Hey, that's a pretty good sign, right? But what else do we see happening here? Uh-oh. Mercury and Mars are just separating from a sextile by one degree. So the question we have to ask ourselves is, will the two planets get together? Because if we see the ruler of the 10th place or the 10th house, the career, moving into an aspectual connection with our client, which could be, which is Mars and the moon, then we have a connection and the client will get the job. Here, even though they're mutually interested in one another, the job and the client are separating. That means they already made a connection. She just recently had an interview or she recently had a connection with this job, but now the job is moving away from her. Uh-oh, where is it going? Well, it's going over to Jupiter. Now, we don't have to know what Jupiter is or what Jupiter means. All we know is that Jupiter is not her. That does not, so in horror, it's a, so, sort of like you don't have to pontificate a lot about a lot of other different things. The basic idea here is that Mercury is heading to Jupiter and not her. Now, when we look at the moon and we say, well, will the moon reach Mercury? Well, yes, but it has to go through a whole bunch of other aspects first. It's going to hit a conjunction to Venus and it's going to hit eventually um, a square to Saturn and it's going to go to Mars and so forth. So uh, the moon, if it doesn't make an uninterrupted, immediate flowing aspect to Mercury, most of the time we'll say that the moon is prohibited from making the connection to the job. Something else gets in the way. So this would be an indication that although the job and her have mutual interest in one another, they are not coming together, they are parting ways. So this is a very simple example of a chart that comes up with a judgment in the negative. No, you will not get this job. And that's how it turned out to be. Individual did not get the job. Although there was great interest, they ended up hiring someone else. So that is a horary chart. Now, um, horary charts are great because you get to learn and you get to learn great predictive methodologies that can also translate back into your natal work because all horary techniques on some level can be used to help you become a better forecaster, a better predictor, a better analyzer of natal charts. It's an amazing study. Um, the only thing I require for people to take the class is that you have to know what aspects are. Like you, if you understood the lingo that I just used, for the most part, if you're able to rewind, re-listen, follow along, and it makes sense, then you'll probably be okay in the horary class. But what I don't want is for people to come in the class who don't really know aspects or dignities, who don't really know house meanings, 
and to get really lost because it is a more advanced class. I assume a certain degree of knowledge and we move along pretty quickly. So um, that's it. I would love to see some of you in class soon. Um, I think Horary, again, is just, it, it teaches you how to think like more of a diviner because you have to start seeing the chart really creatively. And I'll show you some examples of this in the weeks ahead. I'll just, you know, intersperse some things in. And um, yeah, again, um, starts July 10th. Early bird is up until July 1st. Uh, it's a really awesome program. I hope to see some of you there. There are payment plans available and need-based tuition as well if you need it. Um, and two textbooks only that um, are explained on the course page of my website. So you can go to nightlightastrology.com and check that out. Hope you guys are having a great weekend. And um, yeah, hope to share more horror stuff with you guys soon. Take care. Bye.